All right, on this uh, Monday morning, 11 past 7 o'clock, uh, it seems like on a daily basis we are talking about these unprecedented times, unusual things happening uh, on a pretty regular basis, uh, including Congress being called back uh, to work uh, during the uh, August summer recess. Joining us right now uh, to, to talk about that work that uh, that they were called back to do is our uh, 10th District uh, Congressman Paul Mitchell. Congressman Mitchell, good morning. Uh, good morning, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. You voted no on this uh, Postal Service bill. How come? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I, I really, Paul, think it's a fabricated crisis. I, I think, frankly, too much is happening for political reasons where uh, a crisis is created to get people all revved up about one thing or another, and uh, this is one of them. You have to know that the uh, the Postal Service was fully funded. They had enough cash on hand at this point in time to run through next August. That's assuming current operational levels. They had enough money to run. They had a $10 billion line of credit to draw the Treasury if, in fact, there's any shortfall of money. So someone explain to me where the crisis is. Someone explain what the problem is. Uh, the, the Postal Service has been losing billions of dollars every year. This is not a new thing. Uh, they're losing money on their operational costs, separate from their pension costs, for over a decade, and have failed to reorganize. There was a reorganization plan that was started by the previous postmaster general, which was a appointee by the by the Obama administration, that was proceeding in terms of some of the changes. Uh, they've all been put off until after the election because of all this fear that, my God, the election may be impacted, which couldn't be further from the truth. So if it's not a funding crisis, then then what is causing the change in service? Because we are hearing from a lot of people that say that uh, the, the mail has been slowed down. We're hearing uh, stories of uh, sorting machines uh, being taken offline. What, what is going on at the Postal Service? Well, I, I think I've talked with a couple of postmasters and communities in our district uh, who looked at me and said, like, one postmaster been there, has been there now 30 years, started at age 19 at the Postal Service. Uh, says, there's no meaningful change going on uh, in, in the operation of the Postal Service. Are there delays in places? Yes, there are. Uh, and be brutally honest with you, Paul, I think it is some component of the um, union leadership for postal workers to see this as an opportunity to uh, get their share of uh, the, the, it's the federal money pile. Uh, it's a chance to create a crisis for political gain, uh, to gain a little more empowerment for the uh, post workers union and uh, and, make, and get a chunk of cash for the postal union and enforce that there'll be no change. They don't want changes in routes and deliveries uh, because change is bad from their view. But uh, we're losing money in the postal service. Service is bad. It's been historically bad for quite a while. And it's getting worse. Um, I think we need to address that. And unfortunately, we're not going to get it addressed until uh, next year at best. Do you have concerns about uh, the the election, given that so many people are going to be voting absentee this year because of the coronavirus? No, I, I don't. I think uh, what the Postal Service was advising uh, Secretary of State and various groups was that their procedures need to follow the Postal Service process in terms of first-class mail to make sure that that, that, that no request for absentee ballots went in time, that they went out in time, Make sure everyone was aware that we had, there are these time deadlines that, that, that exist in the Postal Service. Uh, to not assume that if you send a, the, an absentee ballot out today, they're going to get it tomorrow and they can send it back and it'll be in, it'll be in, the, uh, in the local clerk's office. That's simply not the way it works. Uh, people are concerned about that, and uh, there are those that are. Uh, they always had the option to drop it by. Uh, all of the county clerks, township clerks, have a, a box to drop off taxes and various things, you can drop your ballot in there. That's what I did with my uh, primary ballot in August, is I dropped it in the in the, uh, in the bin. Uh, they can do that and make sure that they are counted. I think the big challenge will be is, is, is the counting of absentee ballots by the local elected officials when they get them all in. As you know, in, August, in the primary, it was a record number of absentee ballots. It was astonishing. And uh, we're going to have that for a general election. It's going to be massive. It is indeed. One of the things that you said that you uh, would have liked to have been called back uh, to work on uh, is uh, some uh, COVID-19 relief. And that just yeah. hasn't happened yet. What's uh, the status right now of any kind of uh, relief uh, uh, spending? Unfortunately, I think leadership on both sides, uh, both Republican and Democrat, are playing chicken with the uh, well-being of the American economy and American workers. Uh, we need a, a duty expanded unemployment for people that are still out of work. 
Uh, I don't believe it should have been $600 at any point in time a week. It should have been less than that. Uh, because in many cases, uh, $600 a week more than the base Michigan unemployment means that people are getting more from unemployment than they were if they went back to work. That's that's not good for the economy. It's not good for them long term. But we should have expanded unemployment compensation. We have to fix the, the payroll protection program in terms of expanded what's available and fix the forgiveness terms to make it work better. Something called the Main Street Lending Program, which is for mid-sized businesses, is is a mess, is not working. Uh, Treasury's managed to screw that up nicely, and we need to fix that, fix that. So there's a series of things we need to do. Additional money for the uh, K-12 education was part of that. $100 billion was something that was available to go to go to schools. The conflict there is that the governors, including Governor Whitmer, want a significant amount of cash go to the states, $1 trillion, without any limits, and they'll decide how to use it. Um, my kids ask for an allowance for as much as they can get, and we'll let you know what happens. We're not going to do that in terms of the federal money to the states. There's going to be specific guidelines in terms of what should use be used for, and not simply to fill the coffers of state budgets to use in any manner they see fit. There are needs in education, there are needs for first responders, there are needs for, for teachers, and those need to be the priorities, and we're going to make sure they are with federal money. Uh, what do you uh, favor for uh, unemployment? I know that uh, there's uh, been a lot of discussion about uh, you know increasing uh, the amount of uh, money for uh, for those who are unemployed. Uh, do you see any kind of uh, uh, chance for agreement there? Well, I, I think there's a chance for it. What I've advocated for is that the amount of unemployment be limited to say 75, 80 percent of what the individual made when they were working, or the alternative is you take a uh, percentage of the uh, current state of unemployment, and that's the additional money. Either would work and and covers a great deal of what people would have made. And I have to remember, that they're not going to work, so not running the costs of going to work, commuting to work, child care, all those types of things. So it's it's it, it makes sense to have it be somewhat less than they actually made while working. It still makes sure we provide incentives to go back to work. Uh, we have to we have to fix, as I said, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, payroll protection program, so that in fact employers get assistance in bringing people back. Uh, the economy is trying to come back, Paul. If you saw on Friday, it was announced, either Thursday or Friday, the, um, the Purchasing Managers Index, which is the index of buying by corporate purchasing managers, was an 18-month high last month. It is trying to come back to life, and if we simply help it, give it a nudge, and don't manage to, to, to make a mess of it, our economy will come back. We need to help child care providers so they, in fact, can get a support in the costs that they're facing. We need to help K-12 education so children can return to school in a safe and practical manner. Uh, and if we don't do that, how do, how do people work? How, does yeah. the, how, do, how do families, many of them two-wage earning families, go to work if their children are home? Uh, a single-parent family, I don't know how they juggle that, to be honest with you. We need to fix those problems. Uh, otherwise, we're in, a, we're in a difficult place. Yeah, indeed. A lot of work ahead. Um, and, and of course, in an election year, it's very difficult, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, to get things done. Uh, do you th- see uh, this going well, or do you think that this is all just going to get put off until after the election? No, I, I think I think the month of September around D.C. Uh, will be one of the, one of the unple- most unpleasant months we've seen in a while. Uh both in terms of rhetoric and in terms of getting things done, uh, we have to re- we have to fund the government at some basis level. Uh, my guess is we won't pass appropriations bills for a year. We'll pass what's called continuing resolutions for some short term period of time, and those are problems for multiple agencies. Uh, they mess up uh, procurement for <coughs> construction of things in the sewer locks, and it's it's not it's not a good thing. Uh, we're and that'll be lucky to get those done without a shutdown. Yeah. Uh, I think we the odds are, you know, at best fifty fifty that uh, the two the, the leadership on multiple multiple sides just decide that they'll see who blinks first, and and there may be some, uh, albeit short term, shutdown of the federal government again because uh, compromise is a is a four letter word around around D.C. Uh, right up there with you know some terms we can't use your radio show has to go bleep. <laughs> What do you say to those families that uh, you know are still waiting for uh, unemployment benefits? Uh, you know, don't have money to pay the mortgage or, or uh, to go uh, get uh, groceries because they're uh, out of work and, and still uh, yeah. still seeking assistance. Um, well, first, Paul, and we've talked before. 
I had been there when my dad was laid off from the auto plant when they were when they were laid off, you know, laid off regularly. Uh, strikes, I understand it. Uh, you know, we got surplus uh, cheese and, and and what was then called food stamps on those occasions. I mean, I do remember it, and uh, it's wrong. Uh, however, what they need to do is they, we need to get people to stop saying it's the Republican or the Democrats' folks' the fault, and simply say compromise, guys, because something needs to be done. No one's going to get exactly what they want out of this. But what's happening right now is it's being used as an election item to see who pays worst. Uh, the American people are being used for leverage. I, I, my question, I, I talked to the group last week about this. How do they like, how do they like being used for leverage for political gain? Because it, it, that's what's hurting right now is the people that are trying to keep their lives together, pay their bills and being used to see if they can push one part or the other, uh, and to a bad place. It's it's morally wrong, in my opinion, and uh, it's one of the frustrations for which I said I can't continue to. Uh, that's why I decided to have to re- run for re-election, Paul. Yeah, um, it's destructive to our country, and at some point in time, it'd be nice if people figured that out. It is frustrating. I share your frustration for sure, Congressman. I always appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. Good luck. Hey, take care, Paul. I'll, t- I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye.